I heard you were hiking when you received the news. I was just getting ready to hike up, to, la to lace up my hiking boots, and I got the phone call, and that was a really good hike. <laughs> <laughs> and then you mentioned about that the world of science is like hiking the Rocky Mountains. And what about you, Professor Richmond? I, I know that you were outside. So the boat was in Panama, and things didn't go so well. So <laughs> we were in. I was enjoying my time in Panama, and I like challenges. I was back in the village where I was born 70-odd years ago, and then I get this wonderful call. So how do you think of the change that you made for changing human health um, based on your research? Uh, for example, some very um, aggressive uh, brain tumors in children are based on mutations like that. And so there's a lot of medical links because um, how the genome is read out is kind of what we have. Uh, we, we have discovered the basis for how the genome is organized. And that has, of course, profound implications um, whether a cell is healthy or a cancer cell. Um, I gave one example that, that I had hoped to see would make progress when 20 years ago we were doing this work. And that was the AIDS virus. It was discovered by a group in the U.S. that it integrates its genome into the human genome and be dormant but then come out again. And I was really surprised to see that the, the molecular machine that does this prefers to do it into the nucleosome, the structure that we did, as opposed to just free DNA, because most proteins in fact, all proteins up until then were only binding to free DNA, not onto nucleosomes. And when I was preparing the lecture for this, I realized that they had made tremendous amount of progress in understanding how that works structurally to the level of mechanistic detail that I'd like to see done for everything. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's a, a medical outcome from that, but one can imagine that very likely in a few years there probably will be. I would like to touch on a different angle. I mean, DNA damage is the major cause for cancer. Our DNA gets damaged 100,000 times a day, but fortunately it gets repaired, at least whilst you are young, but eventually you accumulate DNA damage. And m over 90% of our DNA is packaged in this structure that, that we got the prize for. So although difficult or to say how you might um, interfere with that, there's no doubt that understanding chromatin structure will uh, uh, help us understand maybe why certain regions of DNA are damaged more than others. Can I ask you, how would you define the academic level and then the science spirit of female scientists. The reality is that the world judges us with a male yardstick. I call it the male yardstick because the value even we women have or someone appearing to be intelligence and so on are, tend to be more male uh, traits, characteristics. And I think we have to work on us women accepting that we are different to men and not having to behave like men to get on. If you're a man and you're discriminating against women, for example, if you're running a lab, that's really not the smartest thing to do because you're losing half of the pool of people that you could be drawing from. I'm again uh, really hopeful uh, and, and from, like I said, from what I've seen uh, from the young women in China, I'm, I'm especially hopeful. They will stand up for themselves they will support each other. The older scientists who are female and male will support them. So I think there's work to be done, but we're moving in the right direction. That would be my advice, is to find, find a subject you're really interested in, learn everything you possibly can. It doesn't actually take that long. <laughs> and you may have other interests that you know things, and if you're lucky, there will be a cross-fertilization. I hope there is still pa space to that it was for us in our generation is to be curious, to have the time to be curious. And Stima said, learn as much as possible and then pick something 
to work on that you're really passionate about, that you're really interested in. I mean, doing science is not an easy job because we fail most of the time. Particularly if you work at the forefront of science, you have to get used to failure continuously because you learn much more from your failure and your successes. Some of my postdocs or students really want to go to industry to find the next cancer drug or they want to work towards some more applied sciences, I think that's fine. Not everybody has to be a basic scientist in single pursuit of a fundamental problem, um, depending on what kind of student they are. So I think uh, my advice to, to the students would be life is short and uh, you, have to, you have to do what is important and don't postpone <laughs> things and they'll, oh, I'll do this after graduate. I'll do